Yeah. Right, so we're back for another episode. We made it through last week and we're at the Wolfpack Bar in Queen's Park and I give them another shout out because we're here, we're using the space, it's cool as shit. They're going to be showing the game, the Saracens versus Leinster game. I'm going to be up in Newcastle for it, so I'm not going to be here. I'll be here in spirit. But they'll be showing the game here at the bar, Queen's Park, 53 Lonsdale Road. Be here or be square or get up to Newcastle with me and it's going to be an epic weekend of ruggers. So big shout out to them. Also, a bit tired today. Yeah, I was up in Leicester last night. We're doing a show for Matt Hampson at the O2 Academy. Uh, raising funds for the Get Busy Living Centre and his foundation. So if I look a bit dusty, a little bit jaded, that's because I am. So it's great to be back for another episode of Don't Mess With Jim. And we're going to dissect it all. We're going to open it up to news of the week, social media, and let's get to it. What's happened in the world? Well, there's a lot happened. It's a little bit old news. Uh, one of the biggest talking points of the weekend, or one of the bigger ones that I saw on social media, and I didn't see the game live, so I've had to go back and watch it, uh, was the Munster Treviso game. Did you see it? I saw bits of it. So there's a big talking point in that. So Treviso were winning the game for large parts of it. They were immense. They played phenomenally well. Munster were way off the pace. I thought Munster were going to smash them. Uh, and there was a point in the game, I think it must have been 76, 77 minutes, where Stander, CJ Stander, he'd grown into the game. He started turning boys over for fun. Basically, uh, did a turnover. There was talk of it not, there not being like a clear release of the ball. And I've gone back and looked at it a hundred times. I think he's fine. He's competed for the ball. Nigel Owens is the ref. People are trying to give him pelters for it. Uh, CJ Stander's fine. And JJ Hanaran has a kick at goal. So what I didn't realise was, I thought the turnover happened on the halfway. JJ Hanaran kicks the, go kicks the goal. Three points. Munster now in the lead and they're going to win the game. But that isn't what happened. So the actual turnover happened on the 10 metre line of the Munster half. And if you're Munster, you're going to kick, line out, try and build pressure, and you're still behind, right? So you're still chasing the game. But I think it was Duvon, or Duvene, I don't know how you say his name. Anyway, the Treviso scrum half has actually kicked the ball away and given Hanaran the kick on halfway. Uh, so Owens marched him back 10 metres. So Owens has marched him back 10 metres, yeah. And the, instead of having the kick in his own half, which he wouldn't have kicked at the goal, he's taken the opportunist one from the halfway line and got it. So... It's actually Treviso's fault and the scrum half's fault that they're not into the, uh, the next stage. Proper hard luck. Big fan of Treviso. They've done amazing this season. I was over there in Italy doing an Explorer uh, show for them for Rugby Pass. Amazing people, amazing setup. And yeah, they've done brilliant this year. So hard luck to them. What else have we got? Northampton. It's all in their hands. Thank God. They're definitely top four now, are they? No, not definitely top four. So they are in the top four by one point with Quinns in fifth. But they've got to go to Exeter. They've got to go to Sandy Park at the weekend. If they win there, boom, they're top four. Thankfully, Quinns are going to finish fifth. Quinns have got to go to Wasps. They've got to go to the Rico. So Wasps now can't make top four. There's a lot of history there. I don't know. It's all in the... I reckon Northampton. Oh, I don't know. Can they, can they beat Exeter? I think what, how this is going to play out, I think Extra will beat Northampton. Northampton will pick up a bonus point. And irrelevant, I reckon Wasps will beat Quinns. You see Wasps at the weekend? I did. Robbed. It was, uh, yeah, Bath in the, I've never seen anything like it. No. Especially from Bath. For me, I spoke to Luke Pearce actually yesterday. I love Luke Pearce. Good looking fella. Good ref. Been called up to the World Cup as well. Spoke to Luke Pearce and he didn't say it, but he wanted to say it that he made the wrong call. That's what I think I got from it. So he, he, he said something like two or three people in the stadium thought it was a forward pass, the touch judge being one. Uh, I don't know if he went to look at the TMO. Anyway, you talk about big decisions. Now, Wasp still could have won the game. Di Young mentioned after the game, but Wasp this season haven't had the rub of the green. I was at the Leicester game. I watched that game live where... I think it was Bialo, uh, the, the prop on loan I played at Saracens with, scored a pick and go try. The referee asked the wrong question. It was 100% a try. Try wasn't awarded. Wasp lost that game. If they would have won that game and they would have got the, the forward pass at the weekend, not uh, given in favour of them, they'd be top four. So you talk about small margins and referees' decision. We don't want to bag them, but you've got to. So Luke Pearce, I don't know, off the help of his touch judge in the TMO, they've cost Wasps massively. 
the, the TMO's meant to guarantee that the deci- right decision was made, whereas this, if the TMO wasn't a thing, it would have been given. Exactly, 100%. The TMO, the power is in their hands, maybe too much sometimes. So, but yeah, but Wash have got Quinns at the weekend. There's a bit of history there. Watergate, do you remember that? Between Haskell and Marler? Oh, it's pretty loose. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a bit of history there. I want to see Wash win. Di Young said that he wants them to go back to the Rico Arena and put on a performance for the fans. And I think they will. I think it will play out. I think Northampton will finish fourth. And then I think that Wash will finish in the top six that's how I think it's going to play out who knows anyway what else have we got the Falau situation just ain't going away away. constant constant chat and I know that at the minute they're going through the procedures of um, the hearing with with the Australian Rugby Union what I found really interesting this week was is the Aussie Rugby Union have offered to pay him a million pound Aussie dollars I don't know what that converts to but it sounds a lot just say it's a million quid or whatever to walk away Take, take the money and walk away into the sunset and do what you've kind of set out to do for that. Well, yeah. that's kind of what he's, he knows what he, he knows what he's saying. He knows the situation surrounding it. He's been warned before. If you do it again, you're gone. They, he's done it again. They've offered him a million pounds to walk away. And he said, no, I have no idea. But then interestingly, on Rugby Pass, they published an article this week. Uh, he's been offered to play for Tonga. There's been talk of him playing for Tonga. So he's, he's, he's clearly... An Islander, so from Tongan descent, mum and dad. Now, Kefu, who is the coach of Tonga, has said that they're welcoming him with open arms. Of course, he's a world-class player. And if you take away the storm that's surrounding him now, so in three years, if he swears his allegiance to Tonga, in the next World Cup in 2023, I don't know how long, I don't know how old Falau will be, 33 maybe then? Something like that, but he could play for Tonga. Is it? Who knows? What's he going to do? He could play sevens. Rugby league has said they're not going to take him. I read something this week, actually, that uh, Rapid Rugby, this new franchise league that's been set up with Perth and I think the Sunwolves are going to go in it and a couple of other teams. Potentially, they, they might take him. And that's how he'll qualify through Yeah, so I think he needs to be playing and there needs to be a residency thing there. But the Falau situation reigns on. I have no idea. What other news we've got? Big news. London Irish, they have got the checkbook out. They've obviously now established themselves back in the Premiership. There's money from CVC, which has been well documented, so they can actually spend a bit of money. I tried to do a bit of digging. So the owner is a guy called Mick Croson, I think, and apparently they've got an American backer. Now, I nearly signed for London Irish, and I didn't because I was fucked, so body was gone. I couldn't do it, just couldn't do it anymore. So luckily for me, I didn't because they got relegated um, the season that I was meant to go there. But yeah, they, they've, they've pulled the stops out. So a list of signings that they've got. So Sean O'Brien, we know about, quality signing. Uh, Naholo, Waseki Naholo, the all black, 20 odd caps, the winger. And Rugby Pass actually, I think back in February, published an article saying that he was gonna go there. So they got that right in the rumor mill. Uh, Sekepu, Kepu, how is that how you say it? Sekepi, Sekepi Kepu? Let's just say Kepu. Uh, the prop, the Australian prop, they've got him as well. There's talk of Jerry Flannery, the Munster forwards coach who's now turned down a contract, is going to go and join De- Declan Kidney Bean, old mate of his, at London Irish. So that'd be another coup if they got him. But the biggest one, and the one that's caused the most storm, is Paddy Jackson. So Paddy Jackson. People know his story at Ulster. There was a big court battle going on about some incident off the pitch to do with him allegedly raping another woman uh, with a group of other Ulster players. They were then consequently found not guilty. And then he went to Perpignan to play. And I actually watched a couple of the games. He weren't the best when he was at Perpignan for probably a number of reasons. Being in France, Perpignan a crap. uh, And everything that's kind of surrounded him mentally I imagine but anyway he's now signed for London Irish and the fans ain't happy not all of them but there's been a big Twitter storm that's followed that people saying that they're not going to go to the game uh, they're not going to follow London Irish now what are you doing my opinion is on it he got found not guilty so I don't know any of the details surrounding it apart from what's out there in, in the public domain 
So if you look at it, the poor lad, if you want to say that, has gone through this process. His Ireland career has gone. He's been told he'll never play for Ulster again. He's gone to France to try and get out of the, the limelight, if you like. And now he's been given an opportunity to go to London Irish. It fits. London club, Irish, kind of get, gets you back into that. Do you think he'll ever redeem himself on the pitch and change a few fans' minds? I don't think so. I think you look at it, and that's the thing with this whole social media and the way that the world works. Innocent until proven guilty. But now, even if you're up for something, then people can pass judgment straight away, can't they? We've seen it with all the celebrities. Obviously, uh, who was it, Cliff Richards? He come out, a load of stuff as well. Michael Barrymore, there's another one as well. And, and Paddy Jackson, unfortunately for him, who knows what's happened. I'm going based on the court of law that he was found not guilty. But yeah, a Twitter storm has been sparked around him. If we're talking about rugby, he's going to be a big asset, good player. Can he get back to the level that he was at? Um, we don't know. Only time will tell. So London Irish have got the checkbook out and apparently another couple of big signings are going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks. So Jim, you mentioned uh, Joe Flannery leaving Munster. There's potentially space for some other coaches to move in there. And there's talk of Rob Howley. What, what's happening in Wales? It's falling apart, they're all going. Hey, just for the World Cup, Sean Edwards has said he's gone, Gatlin's gone. Uh, and then now, yeah, Rob Howley. I think it's time for Rob Howley to move on. Um, he, you know, he's been there a long time, but there's talk of him going over to Munster because it's not just Jerry Flannery, it's their backs coach as well. I don't know what his name is, can't think of his name, but uh, he, he's leaving. There's a lot of talk about the Munster fans. They're not happy with their, their attack and how they played this season. So yeah, Rob Howley, the exodus of Wales continues. So other news, Newcastle. Now we know they've been relegated now, unfortunate for them, gutted to see them go down. But their players are being raided, get it? The raid is on, as Rugby Pass article says. Sa Simon Hammersley to sale, you can see that. Uh, Mark Wilson, one of my favourite players, on loan to sale. You can see that, I thought it, I heard he was going to Wasps on a deal, I didn't know whether he was going to go on loan, but the sale move for him makes sense, if that is true. What a quality player. How good will Selby if they get Mark Wilson next season as well? The other big one is the Scottish back, Chris Harris, to Gloucester. And that's not a loan deal. Apparently, he's going there full noise. So, the raid is on for Newcastle. Uh, I'm sure that they'll bounce back. They're be you know, if you're a player there, if you're Mark Wilson, right, you don't want to be playing in the championship, unfortunately. He's going to go to the World Cup. He's probably got another couple of years left with England at the top of his game. He needs to be playing top-level rugby. Yeah, so unfortunate for Newcastle. A bit of rebuilding there. Uh, I'm sure they'll come back up. What other news have we got? Big news. Big, big news. Haskell retiring. Could see it coming. He's slowed down a bit this year, hasn't he? Uh, went to Northampton. Uh, tried to give it one last crack of England getting into the World Cup. I should say I am a massive James Haskell fan. I've known Hass since we were 18. Well, I was 18 and I was English back then. That's when I knew we were in the academy together. I'll tell you what, there's some characters in the game. Basically, all the lads are saying at Rugby Pass that I'm a shit version of James Haskell, effectively. So he does everything that I do, but he does it significantly better. Can't argue, really. Can I? Social media. I think my wife's better looking than hers. I should say that, shouldn't I? But, yeah, it's time for him to hang up his boots. He's got loads going on, though. And I spoke to him last year, actually. Uh, did an article for Rugby Pass with him and said, what does, what's the James Haskell dream? What do you want to do? He's got cooking books. He's a social media king. Uh, he's got his own gym. Um, what else? He said to me, I want to be a DJ. That's what he said. And I laughed, actually, when, I said, when he said it. But I'm looking now. He's at all these uni gigs, he's at these rugby's at the London Sevens, he's DJing. And there was a part of me at first, I was like, Ask, what are you doing? He's throwing out his finger, he's dancing. But to be fair, he's bloody good. Everything that he does, he's tried everything. He gets a lot of stick off the lads. I tell you what, he's built a social media empire. He's put himself into the stratosphere of A, B, C, D, C list celebrities, I should say. So C, that's all right, about right. Decent list. Yeah. I see myself as maybe a D or an E-list. E He's a C. So he'll do well. 
Celebrity Jungle, what do you reckon he's going to pop up on there? Ah, uh, him and his wife Chloe. Imagine them both in there at the same time. That's what's going to happen. I don't, I don't think he's going to go in the Big Brother route. He's going to go down that. I can see him on the SES programme, like Fodes. But yeah, big shout out to Haskell. Massive fan of his. He's going to do incredibly well after 70 odd caps for, for England. And he is going to be missed on the rugby field. But I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more of him on social media. So James Haskell, big shout out to you, my man. And uh, we will see you on the other side. What's it like to retire? Uh, I found it quite easy. Um, I wanted to retire. My body was gone. Probably similar, similar to Hask. You, you, you see the pain that he spoke about that he's been in, not been able to train at that level. Yeah, for me, it got to a stage where I couldn't wait to finish. It's very different, obviously, uh, in terms of the transition that people speak about. Uh, what I find hard is, is the admin and not being regimented actually got bored of driving to training, turning left, putting my bag in a certain place, going for breakfast. The monotonous routine, I, I actually didn't enjoy. But I actually miss that now. That's the, probably the bit that I miss. And the camaraderie and the boys and stuff like that. But I've got a pretty cool job now. I just talk about rugby and abuse people. So it's pretty easy. But yeah, retirement's different. And it's weird because you talk about retirement. I was 34, I ain't retiring. Just moving, moving into a new field into a new life. Transition, it's the word, it sounds so weird. But yeah, so I'm in transition, and so is James Haskell. So a big shout out to him. In other news of the week, I've been reminded, I got reminded in the street actually, uh, that someone picked up, that I think there was an anniversary. I don't know how many years, it might have been five years, uh, of my first day as Gloucester captain. I think it was in 2012, 2013. Well, that's not five years, that's six, seven years, a long time ago. It's the anniversary of my punch-up with David Pace that went viral on social media. It got about 25 million views. That's my legacy. So the thing is, Jim, from me watching it, it looks like you started it. No, no, I finished it. There was a bit of handbags. What you don't see on the social media clips and the YouTube clips especially is I get kneed in the back as I'm talking to Dave Pearce and you don't see that. And actually, when we had the hearing with Brian Smith, who was outraged by my behavior, he said that I should have got a longer ban than David Pace, which we didn't, we both got the same. So obviously, you know, it just shows that we were both at fault and it wasn't all my fault, Brian Smith, is that David Pace knees me in the back on the way off. And I'm thinking, right, first day as captain, okay, at London Irish, I actually fall up the steps of the Majeski Stadium on the way out and half the team are leaving, Gloucester are in dire straits, we're losing by 30 odd points. I've got some Aussie bloke chirping at me, giving it lows in the game. I thought I can't have this. And it was, it was subconsciously thought about and then consciously thought about. I thought, he's need me in the back when I'm talking to Dave Pierce. If he says anything more to me as we're walking off, he's fucking having it. And that's what happened. We both got simbined, thought that was the end of it, walked off. No, he said something, I've turned around and wum bum, how's your mum, KO'd. There was blood everywhere. It was an absolute massacre. Uh, initially, I felt really bad. So a load of things happened at the side of it. Dave Lewis got knocked out by Trevor Anus. What a name that is by the back row. Trevor Anus, what a name. He got knocked out by Trevor Anus. Sean Knight got knocked out. He apparently is a boxer. The linesman broke his arm as well in the kerfuffle. Kieran Lowe, who was a good mate of mine, he was the water boy. He's throwing the water bottles into there. It was absolute carnage. So my initial thing was, I was gutted that it happened. But now that I look back on it, and I suppose after the hearing and the dust settled, it was the right thing to do. Captain of Gloucester, proud club, you know, we were losing by 40 points, it was an embarrassment. Imagine if I just walked off, and I'd been filled in by this Aussie bloke. No, no, so unfortunately for my kids, that is my legacy. Basically, if you type in Jim Hamilton on YouTube, the next word that comes up is wife, I don't know why, <laughs> or fight. So you click on that and you will see me going to town on David Pace. The scariest thing about it was though, is as I've walked off and David Pace is bleeding and the coaches are raging and there's uproar. Do you remember Hello of Fear? Yeah. Oh my God. He has come down from the stands in his suit and he's calling me out. And I've just, I'm like that. No, mate, I don't, I'll take anyone, but I'm not taking you. So yeah, so that was a post from Rugby Pass this week. Thanks for that. Uh, Sponge, Spongefish Hamilton, that's what they called me up until that point. So yeah, so thank you for that.
Rob, any more news? I ain't got any more, mate. That's all I've picked up on that's worth talking about. You got anything? Uh, well, as a diehard Sale fan, I'm still unsure whether we're playing in the top European uh, competition next year. There's all sorts of stuff going on social media about how Cardiff or Ospreys and Sale or other clubs might already be qualified because Leinster and Saracens are in the final. It doesn't make any sense. I have no idea. Trying to crack the Da Vinci Code. I tried to crack the Da Vinci Code, which was the Pro 14 conferences A, conferences B, who's going to face off if you finish fourth, you're in Europe. If you finish third, you're in a quarterfinal. You play him from conference A and conference B. Je ne sais pas. I have no idea. So Sale, if they finish seventh, potentially can still qualify in Europe if it goes the way... Has the Challenge Cup got anything to do with it? Yeah, because Sale were in the semis of the Challenge Cup. Yeah. If Harlequins qualify by finishing in the top six, then Sale potentially will play. I don't know. Exactly right. World Rugby, or more so the EPCI, you need to make it simpler. We're here to try and give the fans, give the millions what they want in terms of next season, who's playing where, who's playing who, where they're going on holiday to watch their games. Sale fans have no idea. They could be going to Romania and Russia, or they could be heading to France and Saracens and the big teams. So who knows? Matt, I can't help you. I don't know yet. We should know more after this weekend. After this weekend? It after this, well, we should do. Who knows? So anyone who knows, just let us know. Come through and, let, and tell us. Right. Social media. Posts of the week. There weren't many. Last week we had some belters, didn't we? There was, there was a long list. Um, this week there's not too many. What have we got? Danny Cipriani. To talk about talking points of the week. Voted players player of the season for the RPA. And he's probably not going to be in the England World Cup squad. Eddie Jones, what is going on? If the peers and the players that play against him and with him week in, week out, pick him as the best player in the Premiership and you don't see it, then we in the media, the players, they don't know anything. Eddie, what are you doing, mate? Danny Cipriani is the Form 10, and I say that above Farrell as well, in the Premiership, and you ain't picking him. I just don't get it. But I say post the week, because Danny Cipriani posted uh, an interesting Instagram post. Changing old ways. I haven't got the full thing, but there was a quote in there. He said, let go of an old life and old habits. And it was almost like this zen of, he's going to make changes. Is that a message to Eddie Jones? Could well be. It could well be because I don't get it with Cipriani. I, I think I do. I, th I think that Eddie Jones doesn't like his character, doesn't like the media storm that follows him. And you've got Farrell. Of course you have. Farrell's your number one. Okay, he might not have played as well as Cipriani this season, in my opinion, but Farrell's your number one. Then you've got George Ford, a good player. He is a very, very good player. Is he as good as Cipriani? I don't think he is. You know, if Cipriani's got any frailties in his game, it's his defence. So is George Ford, you know? And you only have to look at what Cipriani has done for Gloucester. They've finished in the top four. Some of the rugby they've played this season in attack is absolutely sublime. It's Cipriani. And if you're looking at England, what they're lacking is probably a little bit of creativity, a little bit of star quality. And you're not picking Alex Good. Who knows? He's up for nomination for, you know, Champions Cup player of the season. Eddie Jones ain't picking him. Cipriani on the bench or to come in, play in the World Cup in the games that Farrell is in, is an absolute must. I ain't bothered. I'm Scottish. But I'm talking about as a, as a rugby fan. Cipriani, not just the money that he's potentially lost having not played for England, but the England fans, look what we did against South Africa. Like he put that kick through, you know, and the, the game that Cipriani played, England won. Eddie Jones, what is going on? It's crazy that you have one guy that can map out your career and your legacy. So Danny Cipriani, he's put a post, a post up on Instagram that he's changed his old ways. It's a message to Eddie Jones. Eddie Jones, take your finger out your ass and pick him for the World Cup. It's only fair. You're out of order, mate. What are the social media posts we've got? We mentioned the Haskell retirement. We've got to mention it again because he posts everything up on social media. So there's a big thing come out about his retirement. He spoke about it on his podcast and I ain't bothered. Crossover. I like his podcast. 
Haskell, I like what you do. And you can see he was slightly emotional. So we're going to talk about him. Yeah, so that's it. Haskell retirement on his social media. Did you see the uh, Danny Care Instagram post? I did, actually. The kiss. Good bit of bromance. Yeah, it was a good, good bit of bromance. And Haskell has a bit of bromance. With people. I've never kissed Hask myself. I'd like to. So, you know, I don't know. He's got big teeth. I've got big lips that could, you know, cause a bit of a, a weird mashup. But yeah, him and Danny Care, he posted that. And like you said, with all the falau stuff that's come around, I quite liked it. A bit of backhanded banter, backhanded humour. So yeah, that was nice from Danny Care. And you can see how well-loved Haskell is, not just in the rugby fraternity, but the sport, the sports world. So yeah, good. I like Danny Care. Nice, mate. Well done to you. What other ones we got? Oh, the biggest one. My social media post of the week goes to the Wooden Spoon. I don't know if you've seen what's happened and what's been going on with them. So basically, Shane Williams, Lee Mears, Tamara Taylor, and a good friend of mine, Ollie Phillips, they have scaled the mountain of Everest, and they've gone up there to play the first and the highest game of rugby in history at 6,331 metres, and they've raised a quarter of a million pounds for children with disabilities for the wooden spoon. And they've posted uh, a picture of them at the top of there. And I climbed Mount Kenya about two years ago. One of the hardest things I've ever done. The altitude, I was absolutely fucked. Me, Reskill, Mike Ellery, Ben Ransom, a couple of other Saris guys that did it for a charity for Space for Giants. Brisk Wart, they said. Oh my God, it was like a scene. It was like a scene out of the film Everest. So I know how difficult it is. What One, just getting to a, a decent height. But to go and do what they've done and to play a game of rugby, and it was full contact apparently. I hope they post a video of them actually doing it uh, and actually playing the game. Uh, and apparently one of the, the guys that went with us, it wasn't just them that went. There was a group of people that sponsored it, corporates as well. One of the guys nearly died. And he was one of the fittest guys on there. Apparently his lung, lung collapsed. He's in a hospital in Nepal or something like that. And he nearly died for the cause of the wooden spoon. <laughs> So fair play to them. But yeah, I mean, you talk about putting yourself out there. I was with Shane Williams in Hong Kong and he had three days at home to go. I think it's taken him two or three weeks to, to go and do that. So for me is the post of the week goes to the wooden spoon uh, and all them guys and girls that have scaled Mount Everest to play the highest game of rugby at 6,331 meters. Good on you. Right, game of the weekend. The only game to talk about, uh, not too interested in the Challenge Cup, two French teams. Let's talk about the big one. Saracens versus Leinster in Newcastle. What a game that's going to be. Cannot wait. I'm in Newcastle for the game. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be hanging around probably the team that win at the end, see if I can get on, pick the trophy up. And the team that's going to win at the week, I reckon Sarri's going to do it. I think all the momentum is with them as a club. Leinster haven't been great this season. I say that, it sounds really harsh, because they're in the semi-finals of the Pro 14 and they're in the final of Europe. I actually thought Toulouse were going to beat them. Shows what I know in the semi-finals. Uh, Leinster smashed them, but I think Le Saris are just better. Just better this season. Last year, Leinster smashed them in the quarter-final in Dublin. I was at that game, comfortable victory, but all the momentum is with Saracens now. Makavola Polar is going to be back. Um, you look at how their big game players are playing. Liam Williams, Will Skelton, I reckon he'll play. I think they'll put Maratoji at six. Look how they did against Munster. The interesting one is the fact that they've got a French ref, the same referee that refereed Saracens' Munster game. And Saracens arguably were borderline in offside. There's a lot let go of the breakdown as well. I just think everything's in favour for them. It's going to be, I could see it maybe going to extra time. All the stuff's come out this week of that Leicester Cardiff game that went to extra time. I could see it happening up in Newcastle. Johnny Sexton versus Owen Farrell. Who's the better 10? Who do you reckon? Personally, I'd, uh, I'd go for Farrell Sexton. He's, he's a bit older now, you know. He's a bit, bit off the pace. Yeah, he has been a bit off the pace, Sexton has. But in that semi-final, he was class. I would say Farrell edges it. I would. Uh, I think they're very similar players, very similar characters. I think you look at it, I think Leinster have potentially got a better back line. You look at who they've got. Uh, is Lama going to be playing 15? Carney, James Lowe on the wing for them is an absolute specimen. He's a phenomenon. So he's going to be classed there. There's going to be some good battles. Leinster might pip the set piece potentially. If Saracens have got any kind of flaws. Last season more so than this season, the scrum. They're a lot better this year. 
hard one to call. My heart's going to say Saracens. It's going to be an absolute epic game. Battle of the breakdown. But Saracens are a different team without Brad Barrett. True. Is Brad Barrett going to play? That's the thing. He is an absolute warrior. I know his ankle's fucked. Uh, and he played, he rolled out for half of the game against Munster in that semi-final. You know, they've got Nip Tompkins, who, who's, who's been great. Lazowski, will he fill in, in the centre? Barrett's a big loss. He really is. You know, but they've got Billy Vunapola, Maka Vunapola, Skelton carrying the ball. Unbelievable. He's in the form of his life. Yeah. Ben Spencer at scrum half. I imagine that he might play ahead of Wigglesworth and bring Wigglesworth on. That's work for them. But my heart's going to naturally say Saracens. It's going to be an absolute epic game up in Newcastle, St. James's Park. What a place to play a game of rugby. And we saw that during the World Cup, didn't we? If it does go to extra time, who do you reckon, uh, who kicks after the, the obvious choices? Who are the obvious choices? Well, I don't know about Leinster. I'd love to see Dev Toner have a kick at goal. I don't know, Saris, you obviously, who's, who's got a good boot? The Vunapolas, of course they have. They've got a good boot on them. I've seen them. Billy, from at, at, on the touchline, that's what he used to do after. Extras, I was doing catch pass just trying to work on but catching the ball. He was so good at everything, he was like, oh, fuck it. I'll just do some kicks from the touchline. So the Vunapolers might rock up. They can do everything, can't they? So I'd love to see that. That would be the best case scenario. Like we've seen that. Look at the football this week, how epic that's been. Now, football is not a sport that I always watch, but this weekend, the drama. would love to see a bit of drama at the weekend. I don't want to see one team go out and smash it. I don't think they will. I'd love to see it go to extra time and then go to goal kicks at the end that'd be absolutely epic heart says Saracens head says Saracens it's going to be epic I'm going to be there and I'm going to be lifting the trophy with my mates at Saracens they don't know that they're my mates I'm just saying that they are so come on Saris.